I'm great. Thank you for asking. Um, Against a good secondary, which the Patriots have, you guys had seven pass plays for 20 or more yards, and Aikens had the most. Number one, could you talk about Aikens, how he's played since he returned and what he means to the offense, but also the running ability after the catch of Aikens and your receivers to allow you to have so many uh, explosive plays? Well, Aikens has done a very nice job for us. Um, He's a hard worker, conscientious, uh, and he's able to catch the ball in that intermediate area a lot of times. And if he has the step, he's able to turn it up and gain the extra yards. Um, And then he's athletic enough that, you know, he can break an arm tackle or he can step over a low tackle, which then adds to the run after catch. So uh, we're very pleased with what he's been able to do and how he's been able to help us. Um, Now, then the other guys, um, the wide receivers themselves, they have good speed. John, they have good speed, and a lot of times in a man-to-man coverage situation, if they can catch the ball, they can outrun the guy. Usually, if it's tight man and you're able to make the catch, the guy is usually a step behind you, and now then that allows you to gain more yards on that on their catch-and-run situation. And now, if it's zone and they're able to catch the ball in the zone, Usually there's some space in the zone so you can get started. And then if you can make somebody miss, that improves your catch and run numbers as well. And so the ability of our guys uh, and the ability of the quarterback to put the ball in good spot, all right, help us get good run after catch and, and make those kind of plays. Have you seen Tim Kelly grow as a play caller this season? Yes, I have. You know, uh, you, you think back. I mean, from the start of the season to where he is now, uh, he's improved quite a bit. And it's it's just like, you know, I I tell you about other guys who are doing it for the first time. There's a growth deal that's involved. You have to get used to calling the plays. You have to get used to your ability, your guy's ability, uh, what the opponent is doing, and then pick the right play at the right time. And I think he's doing a good job of, of doing that. Aaron Wilson. Hey, Romeo. Hey. When you look at Matthew Stafford, what are some of the um, <clears throat> difficulties that playing him poses for the defense? Well, he can make all the throws, and they and he's not afraid to throw it vertically down the field. A lot of their routes are vertical routes, and so we're going to have to do a good job of trying to pressure him first of all, you know. And and I think that's where it starts. Particularly if they're going to throw vertical, they have to have time to give those wide receivers a chance to get enough depth in the route. And so now the pass rush becomes a factor for us. So if we can get a pass rush, so that he's not able to stand back and cock that arm and deliver the ball deep down the field, then that's going to help us. And and so that's the big thing. And the coverage-wise, we're going to have to keep those guys in front of us and not let them run past us. What have you thought about A.J. Moore since he's gotten back? And just what do you think about him overall as a player? And I also wondered if you have an update on Laramie and how he's feeling, if he's going to uh, – you think he's going to be able to go on Thursday. Thank you. Right, A.J. Moore has done a really good job for us uh, since he's been with us. You know, his role primarily was special teams, and he's outstanding at that. But then he's been able to come in and, and help us on defense by playing some safety, also playing some of our dime um, position defense. And, and he's effective as a, a pressure guy. And so – uh, I like what he brings to the table, and I think that he'll tell you that he's enjoying the expansion of his role a little bit. Uh, Tunsil, uh, I think that he'll be here today, and we'll just have to talk to him and see how he feels. But I'm hoping, if he's here today, I'm hoping that he will be traveling with us tomorrow. Adam? Hey, Romeo, along the lines of what John asked you about with Tim Kelly, just how do you feel Anthony Weaver has handled himself as a first-time defensive coordinator? I think Anthony has done well also. I think that he has grown uh, just like Tim has grown. And I think that last week was a good example, you know, because uh, he's been 
been gotten after about the run defense, and, and probably I've been the guy who's been leading the choir on that, but he stepped up last week and showed that he can get guys to do what they need to do to stop a run. And so that was a great example to me that he's made tremendous progress uh, in his first year as coordinator. Is there anything that he did specifically that impressed you last week? That he held him to 86 yards. Brandon? Sorry. Romy, I'm curious, is, is there a way for Kahali Warren to see the field given the success of the tight ends that y'all had so far? Well, yeah, there's always a way. If you can, if you got a guy on the 53, all right, and he dresses for the game, there's a way for him to get into the game. Now, what that way is might not be what he wants it to be initially, you know, but I would say that probably there'll be a few special teams plays for him. There may be a few offensive plays for him, you know, but I don't know that he'll be able to come in and, and just displace those guys who've been playing ahead of him because they've been playing there for a reason, you know, and they've been producing. Uh, so if he goes in, he will complement what we have. And then also, Romeo, is there more confidence in the pass rush? I know you mentioned that earlier in, in terms of getting to Matthew Stafford and tr trying to get him off, off time and everything. Is there more confidence in the pass rush given – um, the performance that you guys had uh, the other day against the Patriots? Yeah, I think that they feel better about the rush, you know, and 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 I know all those guys want to get to the quarterback and they're working to get to the quarterback. And sometimes impacting the quarterback is not always getting him on the ground. You know, like last week, what J.J. had four passes that he knocked down. Uh, and that's a tremendous, a tremendous deal to knock that many balls down. So that shows that his length and his effort toward the quarterback impacts the quarterback. And so if we can get that done against Stafford, that's going to help us a lot. Stacy Dales. Coach, we often learn most about individuals through times of adversity and challenge. I'm just curious what you've learned about your leaders on each side of the ball, your quarterback in Deshaun specifically, and also J.J. Watt on the other side. Well, I've known J.J. a little bit more, so I know what he's all about, and, and he's all about being a pro and trying to be the best he can be on every play and every snap. Uh, and I think Deshaun wants to be the best that he can be every play and every snap because I think that he had developed that, you know, in his younger years and from high school all the way through college. He's always been that leader, and I think he embraces the leadership role. Uh, he embraces being the guy with the ball in his hand, and so both of those guys on our team are good leaders, and, and they help make us better. And if I may just quickly follow, what's it like coaching J.J. Watt? Uh, I coach J.J. just like I've coached every other player that I've had. Uh, <laughs> I give him a responsibility. I expect him to execute their responsibility, and uh, generally he does. Thank you. John? Romeo, as a defensive coach, how disappointing is it your defense to be last in the league at forcing turnovers, and what are they not doing that they did in the past? Well, sometimes, you know, turnovers go in streaks sometimes. Uh, and I know at times in the past, the streaks were in our favor. You know, J.J. would tip a ball and intercept it and run it in for a touchdown. Um, the DBs would get uh, interceptions. Uh, and sometimes, you know, you, you knock a ball down, which is good they don't, that they don't complete the pass, but you don't turn it over. And so I know we all want turnovers, and we try to get turnovers. Uh, and the big deal is to get them when they come your way. And I don't know if you remember last week, Roby had an excellent break on the ball. And I thought for sure that he was going to intercept it. Got his hands on it, but he did intercept it, you know. And so sometimes those things happen in the game. And we work on it. we got a circuit that we work, uh, a turnover circuit, we call it. And we work on turnovers and, and different ways uh, to impact the quarterback and impact the ball. And hopefully if we continue to do that, that they'll start coming our way. Romeo, Will Fuller's about to shatter all of his career highs. Is that because he stayed healthy or is he better this season than he has been when he's 
healthy in the past? Well, I think in the past when he's been healthy, he's been pretty impactful, you know, uh, and then this year he's been able to stay healthy. And so that impact just gets compounded, so to speak. And so uh, having him out there making plays, I think that we all feel pretty good about that. All right, we'll take two more. Aaron Reese. Hey, Romeo. Charles Menehu, he only has two sacks, but he's, I think he's leading the team in QB hits with nine. What, what have you thought of just to him as a pass rusher, the progress he's made from his rookie year to this year and, and the sort of uh, pressure he's providing you guys on defense? Well, Charles has, has improved. Uh, the thing about Charles, he hasn't played quite as much because we rotated him in a little bit, and some of that depends upon – what the defense defensive group we have in the game. Uh, and then some of it depends on uh, how he plays, how he's been playing. You know, early on, I, I talked to you guys about not doing the things we need to do on a consistent basis. Well, sometimes if you don't do things consistently the way we need them done, then we don't give you as many opportunities. Um, but I think Charles has kind of figured out what we need done, how we need it done. And so I think that we're going to see him more and he'll continue to have that impact on the quarterback, whether it's hits or hopefully I know for him, he wants to get the guy on the ground. And so he's going to be working to do that. Aaron Wilson. Hey, Romeo. Along those lines with the defensive line, how much do you expect more from Ross Blacklock and maybe even Corey Leggett coming up from practice squad potentially? with the injury to P.J. Hall? Well, I tell you what, I expect the, I expect a lot from all of them. And I, and I tell them all the time that if you're in the game when the ball is snapped, you are a starter and you're expected to respond and play like a starter. So I've seen Ross grow since he's been here. Um, the, one of the biggest things about a rookie coming in, uh, they don't know how to play the game, the pro game itself, and so they have to learn. Um, how the offensive linemen hold and how you can beat that, you know, uh, what our techniques are and what we expect from you. And so you have to get used to that. And so I've seen him gradually get better. And I think that he has enough ability that he'll be a good player for us uh, going down the road. Um, and Corey, Corey has experience uh, and, and he wants to be here because he's on, on the vet practice squad, you know, uh, and, and we called him up and he got him a sack, you know, right away when we called him up. So I think that he's excited about the possibility. And when he goes in there, he's going to give it everything that he has. And so I'm expecting a lot from both of those guys. You guys are the first team that will travel under the new protocols um, <clears throat> or one of the, of the teams that's traveling early this week for Thanksgiving. How much has that been a change for you all having to go over that with the memo that came out yesterday from the league and have to adjust on the fly just a couple of days before you're going to go on a trip? Well, you know, the one of the biggest things that it does is to cut down the number of uh, players that can travel. You know, when we first started, we were traveling everybody just in case something happened. You know, now with the intensive protocol, we're not traveling as many. So like the practice squad guys, we used to take them all, but now we can't take them all. And so we just have to adapt. And, and you, have to, you have to explain to the players why some of the things are happening because they don't understand, you know, why the NFL says we need to do this and we need to do that and, and things that happen during the course of the year. Uh, but I think they all understand that for the safety of the players and the safety of the league, that we have to comply. Go ahead, John. Last one. Romeo, you were talking about the defensive line. Is Brandon Dunn going to be able to play? Yep. I hope. <laughs> well, that's two, that's two different answers. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I hope. <laughs> this one. Yes, I hope. <laughs> no, I mean – John, he just had an ankle. He's he's one of those tough grinders. You know, he can work through an ankle. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Coach.